In this video, I'm gonna share with you a really fun lesson from my flagship improvisation program called Nail the Changes. Nail the Changes is an end-to-end -end solution and a system for being able to improvise accurately and confidently over chord changes, over any harmony, especially jazz harmony, because keys are changing and chords are weird and how do we do it? This course is from the ground up showing us how to do that with every exercise as a beginning exercise, intermediate and advanced exercise. So really it's a massive lifelong resource of a course. There's a lot of good stuff in it and I wanted to share this video with you because on its own, I think you will find it helpful and inspiring and valuable. This is called Make Miles Davis Proud because it's after presenting a bunch of scale options for my recommendations for which scale to prioritize using over every single chord type. And so this is just kind of a fun, hey, let's try this on some real music after going through some of the deeper drills and learning some of the deeper theory. So we're taking the song So What by Miles Davis and we're gonna play the Dorian scale over the chords that change in that song. It's a very common song, very popular, very kind of great entry level song, but also one that we can work on at an advanced level. So really, really fun to improvise over. So I wanted to share this lesson with you just to show my process, a little bit of an example of how I'd go about working on improvising over this particular tune. If you want to learn more about my course, Nail the Changes, you can click on the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com and click on courses and you will find it there. If I mention anything in this video that talks about what we learned before or something coming up, that's because it is from the context of the course, but the video itself, the lesson should be helpful on its own anyway. So hope you enjoy, here's the lesson. All right, so you just got your scale diagrams download and we have just scratched the surface of scales. We haven't talked about using it in an in-depth way like we did with all the chord tones. So what if you wanna dive in and say, hey, I wanna play with scales, I wanna make real music. Well calling this little try this video make miles davis proud because we're going to do so what the famous miles davis tune that um changed the face of jazz music by starting a style uh called modal jazz where the harmony is sticking in one kind of mode for long long periods of time and on this tune we have what can be referred to now as a D minor 11 chord for a long, long period of time, and then switching up just to just a half step of E flat minor. This is a famous, famous tune. And the way that people um, begin improvising on this is that they will play with the Dorian mode scale over this D Dorian mode over this D minor chord, and then switch to E flat, E flat Dorian over the E flat minor um, 11 chord. So you can just think of these as D minor seven, E flat minor 11. Um, and modal is a whole other thing, but we're just thinking of it as the way it's written with these chord symbols. So let's practice playing with actual scales. Now, what if you wanted to play with, with scales and use this scale diagrams download that I gave you and play over so what or play over whatever? Well, part of what I gave you is if you see this chord, you can use this scale. Um, and at least you have one initial option to say, okay, I at least know that this one scale works. So with minor seven, we said Dorian. When in doubt on minor seven, just use Dorian. So that's gonna work great for these. So let's talk about how we go step by step and practice this. The first step is obviously just mapping it out in the slim area, which is what I do. D minor Dorian, and I have that on the screen there in the little fretboard in the corner. And then the same shape up a half step is gonna be E flat minor. E flat Dorian, I mean. Okay, so map that out and then try the continuous, what we did is the continuous chord tone exercise, do it as the continuous scale exercise between the two chords switching back and forth. So you might do eight articulations and switch, you might do more than that. So um, if you, you can choose for yourself, how many times are you gonna play in this scale before you switch to the other one? So we're just kind of treating it as if we're looping between, what if we looped between just D minor right here and then E flat here? We're not even in the song necessarily, we're just trying to see between the, the scales. So if we go one and two and three and four and, and maybe I'll give it another round of that, one and two and three and four and of D minor, and then same amount of E minor or E Dorian. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three. Continuously playing. And you can just do eight and then switch back and forth to get used to the switching. This is very cool because you actually just are shifting. 
sounds like it should be easier than it actually is. You have to shift and then see the whole shape half step up, but it is the same physical shape, just moving back and forth. So I would do that, then I would make sure you can do it on the song back and forth. Let's actually give ourselves plenty of space and do four measures each back and forth between these two chords. Let's try that. You can go slower then, do quarter notes. that harmony sound that is on the record. Switching when you gotta switch. Also do this with chord tones we did that a lot with chord tones so i'm doing it with the scale now so once you can do continuous out of time then continuous in time then you're ready to try phrasing and remember you can do one string at a time two strings three strings at a time that kind of thing that are next to each other so let's try phrasing between these two and then we'll do the whole thing so um, you can apply this to any song this is just a great song to get started with playing scales because you get to play with the same scale for a long period of time so let's loop between these and use phrasing no wrong note there's no wrong note they all will sound good on each chord in the dorian scale rapidly going through this hey do this then this then this and suddenly you're playing music and but if you really do think of how we are adding up all this stuff together obviously time uh the sense of time the feel the accenting the tone all of that really makes a difference for the feel that i get and the feel that i play and your feel might be very different but we want to feel good about our feel whatever it is all those things are coming together but that's kind of it that's the end game right there from there i can just search my soul for how I want to sound, what do I want to express on any given day, any moment. And that doesn't mean I'm, you know, ready to play everything I ever want to play. There's all kinds of things I want to work on still. Ooh, I want to do this kind of scale pattern through it that I haven't worked out yet. Or, ooh, I want to get better at going outside chromatically. Or I play so much here because of my slim method. Um, I want to play really high up. Maybe I want to work on that. Um, next. So there's all these doors that can open up, but as far as making music that feels smooth and comfortable and expressive and people would hear it as, as like, wow, yeah, you're really playing over that. That's getting to that arrival point. So really tricky with this tune is that when you play the whole form, you have this huge long period of being on one chord before switching. So if you're not looking at it, it can be really hard to know where am I? I mean, that's a challenge of its own, but this is just a great try this segment for applying scales if you haven't played much with scales or you just want to nail it with scales with the principles we've talked about so far but now we're just in scales so what is perfect and using just the dorian scale exactly like i showed you there is perfect just to demonstrate through the tune we'll do this um, so we get a sense of the full progression you get so much time practice your phrasing same thing with a different note different note C I meant C is in the phrasing like A B C or A A B C
stop it there. Um, but just different when you're playing the whole form because you're playing on D minor for so long. And I was using phrasing quite a bit th and thinking about it a little and talking to you about it. And then also um, using some scale patterns where um, da -da -da, melodic patterns. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da so side note here if you work on scale patterns melodic patterns of any kind you can these are infinite there's no concrete list of these because you can just make up infinite amount of these but if i go one two three four notes down the scale then start one note higher and go one two three four one two three four that's the uh, melodic pattern that i was just showing there for a second now if i practice it diligently it might, it might sound like that. In my playing, though, I add phrasing to it. And use little bits of it with pauses, and it's way different sounding than just an exercise or just a scale, and there's that spontaneity that we want in music. So kind of a little bit of tangential information here as well, but just want to say, hey, dive in and practice your scales on something. Grab a progression, a song, use this if in doubt, um, and take your scale diagrams download and just start using the practice principles, the continuous playing exercises, phrasing, um, and playing around with scales, maybe going from chord tones and then playing with the appropriate scale and back to chord tones on a single chord. Uh, so that's it for this video. See you in the next one. I hope you found that useful. If you want to learn more about my course, Nail the Changes, you can click the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com and click on courses and you will find it there. If you want to see more videos from the course that I'm posting publicly, because there are a lot of videos in that course and a bunch of them are perfectly valuable, just totally on their own. So I wanted to share a few of them. If you want to see more of those that I'm posting on YouTube and elsewhere, I put together a playlist that's also in the description. You can click on that and find the grouping of videos that I'm posting. So you get more lessons from the course. You should be able to find some things within each of those videos that are very tangible and can really help your guitar playing. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.